5v5 fixed queue times, by the way, boys. <sighs> it's almost like if you want queue times to be low, you should make a popular game. All right, guys. New packs. You know the rules. I've got a really good product for you guys today, especially those of you who struggle with connection. When I'm queuing North America, there's an NA East and an NA West server. The NA West server is not optimal for me, and God forbid you're somebody like Emilio who tries to play Doomfist, because I know a lot of you guys try to play Doomfist on ping in our community who played for Team Ecuador. Like, trying to play Doom on high ping is actually unplayable. Heroes like Hanzo, you have to charge up your arrows for longer on the client side for the damage to register on the server side. The game experience for a lot of my heroes is directly affected by what your connection is and your ping your latency right what gear up does not only will it give you better latency because of how it's optimized through different networks and connections to certain regions and certain servers right not only will you get a more stable connection but you actually end up with less ping um than you were previously right and i had to use this when i was scrimming in eu all the time because i would play on super super high ping i had to use services like this because it, again it actually directly enhances your gameplay's ability right so you're able to switch servers super easily right it makes network connections more stable it's easy to use click of a button guys one button and your connection will be much more solid especially like there's been a lot of inconsistencies with servers recently so today's video is sponsored by gear up and they help you with your latency a ton listen if you want to play an fps game especially in multiplayer right? You got to have a good connection, right? It's essential to gameplay, especially for my hero pool and probably a lot of your hero pools too, because I know a lot of you guys play Hanzo and a lot of you guys play Echo. I know a lot of you guys play Doomfist, right? Doom is unplayable on ping. So big shout out to them for sponsoring today's video. Click the link down in the description to go check them out. Do yourselves the favor. And uh, I appreciate you guys for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get right into the action. Oh my God. Tier list time. Okay. Anna got some buffs coming to this mid season pack. However, like she's still, I, I think she's bad. Like Again, her, like, she got a buff to the amount of her nade heals and it does with damage. But, like, her base stats, like, guys, every target's health got increased. And they all, almost always during a fight are going to have healing mitigation. She's so vulnerable during the fight. Like, she, she still only heals, like, 55 a shot. Which is just, like, or, well, maybe it's, like, it's a little bit more than that. That's just nothing compared to, like, Moira and Kiri and, 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 and Bap and all these other characters so she's just and she's super vulnerable too so she's still just c tier ash i think i'm gonna put in b tier she's definitely got on the right maps like she she's definitely a big winner but with what ended up being the strongest hero in the game she's not good with it with them so ash is gonna be b tier at best bap hot take i think bap's really good right now in ranked at least like good baps they get a ton of value i i think there's better picks than bap Reasons. right now for sure but still, on maps like Circuit, like, he'll always get played. Maps like Havana, he'll always get played. Like, he's... I, I think he excels in the right situation. I think he's a good character. Um, Bastion, I think, is B-tier. Like, I, I think he's just kind of a middle-of-the-pack hit scan hero. Um, I overrated him in my first one because I thought things would never die due to cooldowns. But people feed. <laughs> Which is what I've learned. I still think Brig is an A-tier character. That's my hot take. Like, I... Listen... Brig, Brig is one nerf away to a different character from being, like, insanely strong. That's why I'm going to rank her high. Like, her kit does so much. She just got some big buffs. The second that this Maga meta goes away and the DPS passive continues to get tuned, like, she's going to be really strong again. She's always been a really solid character. She'll never fall below A, a tier in my book. Cass, like, hot take, guys. At least in comp, I think Cass is, like, A or B tier. Um, when, when people, when they, okay, here's here's the situation with Cass. Well, no, I can't, because not right now. Not right now. I have to put him in B tier. When they're not playing wild, but Cass can be good. Right? Um, I think when they play, like, queen comps, Cass is really good. Like, Cass and, like, queen is just insane, because you can hinder her from getting her carnages off. You can roll out of the, uh out of the knife you can roll and survive pulse bomb like you can do a lot of things to save yourself as cassidy in matchups that used to not favor you so i think cass is b tier doom now bro like doom is like you can pick doom but oh my god if they have mwaga dude just switch like it's it's actually impossible to win a head-to-head -head on doomfist right now with mwaga being as good as he is um even though he got buffed like doom will go up the second mwaga goes away but like right now most people can just pick mwaga and farm a doom fist um I, doom's always gonna be pickable in rank though like doom, doom's a hero that people are gonna play no matter what if, if we've learned anything um i just think that he's 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 bad because mauga just absolutely dumpsters him but when mauga goes away he'll probably be a or b tier um i underrated doom fist as well in the previous patch um diva i think diva's a tier dude i think diva's good i i, I think diva's very solid she has her maps like she's really good she's super flexible she's super versatile so I'm a big, big fan of D.Va on this patch. Um, at least in ranked. At least in ranked. I think she can be very, very strong. Um, Echo. A tier for sure. 
Uh, with Mwalga being good to surprise, surprise, best hero in the game right now. Um, Echo copying him is super, super powerful. She's super, super versatile. And Echo, I think, will always be B tier at worst because she can copy the broken things, right? Her beam is super, super solid. It can pierce through a lot of broken stuff in the game, and she can always copy the OP character. So she'll always have an option to play as the OP character, So, which generally is always a tank or a support. So, yeah, Genji, dude, stop picking this hero. Like, I, I don't care if Dive is meta. Stop picking Genji. He's ass. He will never be good. Just, just let it go. Let, let it go. Let it go, guys. He had his two weeks, right? He's not new for his two weeks again for another at least two years. So, unfortunately, Genji players, it's time to hang up the cave. So, let it go, boys. Let it go. Um, same for my other Shimada Hanzo. He just got gutted. It, 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 really is, it really is sickening how Widowmaker continues to get away with this and Hanzo continues to fall on the sword as a weaker version of Widowmaker. And the only reason he ever gets picked is because he's decent in Brawl. Um... The gaslighting from the Overwatch community to sit there and say, I hate dying to random headshots. It's like, guys, his crit rate was a third of Widowmakers. His range is a third of Widowmakers, right? It, it, it's unreal that Widow gets to still exist as a hero when she is far more oppressive than ever is. Because at least on Hanzo, you have to hit your shots to be a threat. Widow, you don't. So it, it's really crazy that people throw Hanzo under the bus. Um... And, and not Widowmaker. I think it's absurd and unfortunately this rework has made him significantly worse. And it really sucks to see it. You know, it really sucks to see it because he was one of my favorite characters. So, uh, now I, I don't even... You guys, all my OG viewers, you know, I don't even touch Hanzo anymore. He's just not fun to play. Um, that's just me though. Alari... I, I think Alari's good in the right situation. She's not good... Well, um, because of Mauga, I'm putting her in C tier. Greetings. Um, she's not good with that kind of comp, but like when he goes away, like she's she's solid on the right maps, but you just have to have a team that's capable of playing around it. Um, Greetings. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Queen, I actually think Queen's okay. Like I I think I think Queen in ranked is solid. Um, she's fun. Well, she's situation. I'm putting her in B tier. Like she can't be played on the poke maps, but like a lot of these like Koth maps and stuff, Queen can be good. She's just worse. Ironically, it's, it's crazy how, you know, Queen was a solid rush pick for a while, and then all of a sudden, you know, the new tanks came out, and, like, they were just better brawl tanks than she was. It'd be cool if there was a way for her to compete for her role instead of only being one spot, but, you know, tanks introduce OP, right? Junkrat! Uh, I think he's bad. C tier. Jay Silly, my guy. Um, you know, I like, he, he can get played. Like, you can play him a comp, but he's not, he's not going to excel over a lot of the other DPS. Um, Kiri, no surprise. I don't even have to explain this one. She will always be an S tier character. She has so much on her kit. She does so much. She has her overrides. Kitsune might be the best ult in the game still. Um, she's just solid. And Suzu, I don't even need to talk about it. She did lose her kill potential, like a lot of it, but like she's still that good even without it. So, uh, Life Weaver, I think, is C tier, maybe B tier. Like he's he's good in the right situation, but you have to have a team that's able to make up for your lack of damage. And if you don't, then it's just bad. So. Weaver, C tier for me, which is where he should be. If Weaver is ever B tier, A tier, S tier, the game will always be bad. The game will, if Weaver is a good character, the game will suck. Guaranteed. Guaranteed the game is bad. Because if the game's most viable strategy is denial, like Weaver's entire kit is, the game will suck. So, Weaver always needs to be a little bit of a niche pick. So yeah, okay. Um, Lucio S tier, I think he's insane. Do you have tier? Mauga stomps him. Mauga farms him. This is if they pick Mauga. Again, it really depends on has your tank like unlocked Mauga and are they half decent at it. This is this is, you know, this is more so a tier list of people are playing well. Um Lucio, I mean, he's just super good right now. Uh he fits in well with the meta. I don't think he's an OP hero. I, the boop the boop buffs were too much, I think. They need to revert those. I know Lucio players love it, but you know, the boop buffs were too much. So it's not that's they're a little too much. I think they're a little silly. Um, no surprise here, Mauga S tier. I mean, uh, Garchomp had a funny reply to my tweet earlier where I tweeted out and I said, Cardiac Overdrive is more oppressive than any tank Greetings. synergy ever was in Overwatch 1. And man, is that true. Like, I, I find it hilarious. And, and this is where I am going to call out the pro 5v5 -er, pro 5v fivers for being phony with a capital P-H. How are you going to claim that tank synergies in Overwatch 1 were too oppressive when you actually had to execute on them? And now, when you you, you cannot be pro 5v5 and anti Mauga. You can't be. You cannot be pro 5v5 and anti Mauga. Because Mauga is what a 5v5 tank has to be. Right? 
Now, instead of actually having to execute on a synergy to be oppressive, you just press E, give your entire team damage reduction and the ability to heal from the damage they do. Like, Cardiac Overdrive is the strongest tank ability ever put in the game. Ever. Ever. So, to all the pro 5v5ers out there, I better not see you be anti-Malga, because this is what you asked for. This, you, you punched your ticket. You Listen, you punched your ticket, okay? This is what you asked for. This is right here what you asked for. So, yes, it could be tuned down. Like, I'm okay with them saying it could be tuned down. I actually think Malga's a fun hero. I just think his gameplay loop in this format is a little bit boring. Um, he's actually fun to play in anything that's not a mirror matchup. But again, it's like, you know, it, it, it is what it is. He's the strongest hero in the game. They've got a nerf cardiac overdrive. Like, I, I don't understand why it gives the effect to his teammates. I really don't. I really don't. Well, I do, actually. It was we, we all do know it's he was the battle pass hero. And, uh, yeah, he was the battle pass hero. So that's why it does that. Um, May, I think, is mid, middle. Like, you know, she's good in some situations. She's good in rush comps. But she's not going to get picked over a couple other heroes that we're going to be mentioning here later on. Um... Mercy, okay, This call me crazy, guys. I'm gonna put Mercy in B tier, or now she's C tier. I'm gonna put Mercy in C tier. I was gonna put her in B tier because Echo Mercy is very, uh, is an option into Malga. It is, it's probably one of the better options into Malga because you can farm copy and copy him before he can get his cage fight. And I have had games where Malgas who don't are, are not good at not taking damage just get absolutely slaughtered by Echo. So bad Malgas get cooked by Echo. I think she's actually the best DPS matchup into him. Um, because she can copy him and she's better in the neutral against him. So I think Echo is Echo Mercy could be you know pretty solid. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to put her in C tier for now. Moira, I think is A tier. I I I, I don't want to quite put her in. Well, no, she's so good with this stuff. I I've got to put her in S tier. She's so easy. She heals so much. She's so good into these comps. It's su such an easy pickup for people to get enormous value on. Um, in these death bally metas. Um. I think maybe Moira should get some minor nerfs, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, she's definitely S tier right now. And I think Orisa is A tier. The four, the, the Terra Surge buffs will matter down the line. It's going to sink Ryan lower into the ground, unfortunately, for all you Ryan players out there. Um, because again, like I, the devs want the Rock, Paper, Scissors for Tank. Because the Rock, Paper, Scissors for Tank is better than the Hard Mirror, right? So Orisa is what they buffed and specifically made a Malga counter with Fortify or tried to do that, right? They specifically did this. So yeah, she's going to have to get buffed because they want her to answer him. But that just puts heroes like Ryan even farther down in the bottom of the pile. And the cycle of 5v5 tanking continues, right? Um, so Orisa is definitely going to be an A tier character for me right now. Um... We'll see. Farah, I think Farah's bad, personally. Like, I think I think Farah needs another year of players learning how to min-max her for her to be viable. But I think D.Va and these Brawl comps are so good right now that you can just force her out um, pretty simply. Um, Ramatra, I think, is B tier. I like Ram. I think I think Ram's pretty good. I just think Malga, Malga just beats him in the mirror um, because he can just rip through him. So, like, while Malga's good, he just can't be good. He's kind of in the same situation as Queen. Um, Reaper, I'm gonna put in, like, A tier because he's good with Malga. That's it. Uh, if Malga falls, then he's gonna be... If, if, if Malga falls down, he's gonna fall down a ton, too. He's a bad character. His ult is horrible. Um, but yeah, no, so I, I, I think Reaper is good with Malga, but that's, that's it. That's it. They can, you can counterpick this Reaper pretty easily. <laughs> Just, like... Here's the unfortunate reality, Ryan Mains. Your hero was designed for a different game. Like, guys, look at how Ryan, look at the beauty and simplicity of Reinhardt, and then compare it to Malga. If you Ryan Mains have not figured it out yet, it's only gonna get worse. The gap between Ryan and these new tanks they put out is only going to get worse. It is not going to get better. And that, like, I know. People, people didn't recognize Ram slowly beat out Reinhardt in, in their mirror when Ram came out. Orisa's constantly having to be buffed to answer these DLC tanks. And the better Orisa gets, the worse Ryan gets. And he's already horrible into that matchup. So, like, the, the, the only way Ryan will ever get picked is if they gigabuff his stats. And that won't last either. So, yeah. So, sorry, Ryan players. Uh, you know. And I will say, like, 
I actually think Ryan, like, his shield is not bad to, like, block off the Wilga, but they'll just, like, their DPS are one or two swaps away from making you switch or you lose the game. Like, just by going Bastion or May or something, so. Hog, I think, is dog into Wilga. He just gets run over. Um, Sigma... I, listen, guys, I think Sig on his maps is just busted. Like, like Sigma has always been an S-tier character, just in the right situation. Like, I, I think Sigma's insane. And I, I said this, you know, I'll talk about this, you know. Sigma was an Overwatch 2 tank in Overwatch 1. He was, Sigma was the first Overwatch 2 tank that came out. And what happened? What did he make? He made double shield and it never went away because he was overkitted. Even despite his nerfs in this game, guys, from the second Overwatch 2 came out, Sigma has always been played on his maps, regardless of the meta. Regardless of the meta, Sigma has always been pickable on his maps, and that's because the hero, frankly, was that strong. That's why he dumpstered Overwatch 1, because he was an Overwatch 2 tank, and his transition into Overwatch 2 has really proven that, so. Um, no way Genji's playable more Hog. Ah, uh, you're right. I think Hog actually is C-tier. Yeah, I, I, I actually do think Hog is C tier. You're right. Hog and Doom are in the same boat because of Mauga. Um, I think Soge is pretty good. I'll say she's A tier and ranked. In Mauga meta, like, he'll have rail the whole game. So he's definitely, Soge is definitely pickable. Um, let's see. Soldier. Middle of the pack. He's just kind of mid. Um, you know, is what it is. Uh, we'll see. The new Sombra buffs. There's not much to say about Soldier. Sombra, I think Sombra is pretty meta right now. Um, I think Sombra is A tier because of the Mwaga meta. I think she'll fall down to B tier after. Um, she's definitely playable. The EMP is really, really good to break cage fights, to do a lot of things. And she's got such a skinny hitbox that Mwaga can't farm off her, which is super important, which is why she's good. And with the next character we're about to speak about, EMP being answers to both cage and now Simwall. I mean... We shouldn't, we, guys, if there's one thing that you need to learn, do not ever buff Symmetra. Don't do it. Let's not do that. We don't need to do that, right? Let's not buff Symmetra. She's insane right now. And Sombra is good into Sim. So it's kind of Sim, Sombra, meta with Mauga right now and no WCS from what I've heard. So yeah, look, I mean, Sim just melts right now. Her stats are insane. Like, for example, her, her Kunai, like, Kiriko Kunai take two shots to kill a Sim turret, right? Not to mention her damage ramp is insane, and she can easily break Cage Fight by farming it forever. Um, so, Sim is one of the great answers into Mwaga because she farms off of him. She's got a skinny hitbox, so it's hard for him to hit her. Um, and she just is complimented by Cardiac Overdrive because she'll just perma-heal off of it, which is just absurd. She's just a better version of Reaper. Hot take, guys. I'm still putting Torb in S tier. I, I don't think Torb is like going to be meta in OWCS or anything. In ranked, he's insane. He's so good. His shotgun does an insane amount of damage. His turret just got buffed. Molten Core is great in the cage fight, right? So I, a Torb is just a big, big sleeper pick. He's always been a really good sleeper pick, right? You just have to know how to play him. I think Torb is crazy, especially in ranked. That hero is not talked about enough for how good he is. Um, and he keeps it on the DL. Um, and he's good in the Tracer. Who, Tracer is just, an, like, literally all of top 25 are Tracer mains. She is insane, dude. That hero is incredible. It's insane that Genji constantly gets nerfed, but Tracer is just allowed to run amok. It's again, it's it's the hit scan bias, is what it is. Um, which is fine. I think Tracer's a fun character, but you can't tell me there's not hit scan bias anywhere, right? Okay. I'm putting Widow in A tier, dude. In ranked, like, listen, there is not there is not another character in this game that you can consistently underperform on and still hold the game hostage. Like there could be a 10 and 10 Widowmaker on the other team, and the game is still being held hostage because how, how her hitbox size has got buffed, how she can one-shot, her health is back. She's just an awful hero for the game, and it's really embarrassing that Hanzo just gets gutted with a third of the crit rate as Widowmaker when he's more diveable than a Widowmaker is, right? Um, there's more counterplay into Hanzo. You can actually peek a Hanzo, right? It's insane. So, like, in ranked, at least, like, Widow is just insanely oppressive, and it doesn't even matter if you're good or not, the hero, like, you still can just hold the lobby's hostage. And it, it, something about Widowmaker needs to be done. It's just, it's it's insane. Monkey, dude, he's just bad, and Mauga Mal Mal just cooks him. Mauga cooks him like a Thanksgiving turkey, dude. It is it is the, the third Thursday in November out there when you're picking Winston and they have a Mauga. Like, you are cooked, right? Um, yeah, it, it, again, Winston is just like Ryan. Like, you know, he's just, he's just an Overwatch 1 hero right? He, he's just an Overwatch 1 tank. 
um, in Tomalga right now. And it's just, he doesn't stand a chance. Like, you jump in as Winston in a cardiac overdrive, you're going to feed them more damage than you do. Like, they put goats into one hero on Malga. They actually put goats into one hero. 5v5 tanking, folks. Ball, mid. I think ball's, well, ball's not, if Malga was worse, ball would be pretty good. But b b ball is just mid here. Um, I think, uh, I, I, I think ball's just mid. There's not much to say. And, and the same goes for Zarya. I, I think Zarya, Zarya's actually all right. I think Zarya and Queen are in similar boats. Like, I've seen good Zarya's get value. Um, I just don't think that she's that good right now. Um, because of Malga, she just doesn't stand up to him. And then Zen, I'm going to put in A tier. Zen is still really strong. He's just like, he's just not up here with Malga right now. Um, mostly because Malga will still die through Trank in a cage fight. Like, to be, like which, is, which is insane. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I think that, uh, I think that's my tier list. Yeah, I mean, Ryan's just dog. Um, and I, I think this is pretty solid. The Malga meta continues. People are going to be surprised by Torbjorn, I think. He's so good in ranked, guys. He's so good in ranked. He's so good. He's so good. But yeah, I think that's my tier list for the midseason patch. Let me know what you guys think. What do you agree with? What do you not? And uh, that's it for my YouTube audience. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all later. Peace.